Hi, I'm Serge from Zid with me, and today's the webinar will be about the Zeduna Shield, a multifunctional Z-Wave device. Zeduna Shield is a configurable Z-Wave device that can be a 0 to 10 volt dimmer, an LED dimmer, a switch, a blind, a door lock, a thermostat, a water valve, a fan control, a sensor, a scene button, or all the above at the same time. Though the name of this device looks a bit geeky, in fact, it's very easy to use. I will show you how to configure it in a few minutes without installing any additional software. The Duna Shield was made for smart home integrators who would like to make a custom device to fit specific requirements of their customer. The Duna Shield allows optimizing the price by replacing multiple Z-Wave devices with a multifunctional one as well as by passing limitation of existing devices on the market. Advanced users can also use it to create custom devices. Let's talk about hardware features first. The Duna Shield has four open collector outputs for LED strip dimming, RGBW LEDs, switches, blinds and electromagnetic locks with 12 or 24 volts. Four 0 to 10 volt outputs for dimmers, valves, convectors, and ventilation control systems, as well as fan coils. Four analog inputs with the range of 0 to 3 volts, 0 to 5 volts, 0 to 10 volts, or 0 to 12 volts to make temperature, humidity, water level, distance, pressure sensors, and many more. They can also become 0 to 3, 0 to 5, 0 to 10, or 0 to 12 volt digital sensors for motion, door, alarms, and other binary sensors. Or they can do 0 or 3 volt digital output to control other devices like contactors. One one-wire input for up to 32 temperature sensors, one input for DHT temperature humidity sensor, and one RS485 or UART output to drive other devices like motorized curtains, blinds, or air conditioning control systems. The Duna Shield can be powered from 12 or 24 volts. To be more precise, the input power can be in the range from 7 to 30 volts. In that case, 5 or 3 volt pins can be used to get a stable power source for other peripherals. It is also possible to power the Duna Shield from 5 volts. In that case, 3 volt source will be still provided by the Zeduna Shield, but 0 to 10 volt outputs will not be accessible anymore. It is also possible to use a USB 5 volt power source. You can also power the Zeduna Shield from 3 volts. There are two available options a DIN rail or an IP65 sealed enclosure to automate gardens and wet zones. The IP65 case comes with a cable gland to safely bring cables in the box. Zeduna Shield is based on Zeduno, a fully programmable prototyping and development board. Zeduno is like an Arduino. You can write your own program called Sketch and upload it in Zeduno. Typically, this is done in Arduino IDE or in VS Code. But today we will completely skip this part. Instead, I will show you how to configure your Zeduno using no programming at all in a so-called zero-coding approach or using examples from our website. Now let me show you a few examples. Example RGBW plus buttons. First, we will consider the example of a 4-channel RGBW dimmer with 4 buttons available on our website. You see the connection scheme in the code, but you don't even need to look at it. Just connect your Zeduno to the USB port and press the upload button. In less than 30 seconds, your Zeduno shield is ready for wiring and inclusion in the Z-Wave network. The QR code shown after the upload of the configuration can be used for Z-Wave Smart Start inclusion. It contains the security code of your device. When included in the Z-Wave network, Zeduna Shield will report its capabilities to the controller to allow it to create all the user controls according to the configuration uploaded in the device. After a successful inclusion, 
you can control all four dimming channels via Z-Wave. The fifth is the aggregated channel and is required for backward compatibility with old controllers. The next step is wiring. For the sake of simplicity, we will be showing only three LED channels and only two buttons. Assemble your Zaduna shield. Then connect 12 volt red wire to Zaduna shield to the LED common power line and to the button common line, while the wide ground cable to the Zaduna shield GND connector. Then connect the three channel cables to outputs PWM1, PWM2 and PWM3. Finally, connect the buttons to inputs ADC0 and ADC1. Make sure to set jumpers to 12 volt input. Now we can switch on the power and observe our device at work. Button short press will toggle between on and off, while long press will dim up and down. Next samples will use our zero coding platform based on the online Zeduna Shield configurator. Before proceeding, I will introduce this simple and easy to use tool. The configurator has three tabs with peripheral selection, with Z Wave associations, and rules. Peripherals tab allows to select the type of hardware you plan to connect to each pin. For example, PWM4 pin can be used as a dimmer with modulation to dim a 12 volt light or LED strip, or as a color of an RGBW LED strip. It can also be configured as 12 volt digital output with functions of a switch, a siren, a valve, a door lock, a thermostat. Based on the function selected, Zeduna Shield will instruct your Z-Wave controller to provide the corresponding user interface, such as a dimmable slider or a switch with the corresponding icon. When you click on the output, the connection schematics is shown. This makes it much easier to wire your device. The red dot shows the current input port, while green dots are showing ports with assigned functions. 0 to 10 volt outputs can be used for light control or fan speed. On the bottom side, we have four digital inputs or outputs. Inputs can be used as a 3 volt binary sensors, such as motion, door, gas, leakage or others, or as an output, pretty like the PWM pins above, but with 3 volts output. Inputs 7 and 8 can also be used as UART pins or RS485, including Modbus. You will need to set the corresponding jumpers. They are included in your Zeduna Shield package. Pins 11 and 12 can also be configured as DHT11 or DHT22. Input 11 can also become a one-wire pin to connect multiple DS18B20 temperature sensors. Four ADC inputs can become 0 to 3, 0 to 5, or 0 to 12 volt digital or analog inputs. Depending on your selection, the configurator will show required jumpers. This allows to connect not only Arduino compatible sensors, but also industrial 0 to 10 volt sensors. In Z-Wave, they will be seen as different widgets depending on your choice. Each selected hardware will correspond to one or multiple Z-Wave features presented in a separate Z-Wave channel. This already allows to control all peripherals from a Z-Wave controller or any other Z-Wave device in your network. You can also change the order of channels. The Association tab allows to define groups for devices you would like to control from the Z-Uno Shield. For example, the Duno Shield can turn on and off other Z-Wave devices in your network by sending control comments. The first group called Lifeline is always present and is made to report status changes to your smart home gateway. You can create additional groups to send basic set comments to turn on and off, to send switch multi-level set comments to turn on, off and dim, or door lock set command to control a Z-Wave lock, or scene control to send scene numbers. Here you just define those groups. Assigning devices to those groups is done using your smart home gateway after adding the Duna Shield in your network. The last tab allows to define relations between events and actions. For example, if the luminance is less than 50 lumens, turn on the light and otherwise turn it off. 
You can also combine multiple conditions and send comments to other devices in Actions. For example, if the door status changes and it is open, then turn on the light in the association group 2. And another one to turn it off when the status changes and become closed. The condition on the change is required not to constantly send on and off comments in the Z-Wave network. Finally, you can also use more complex conversions of values like this smart dimmer using the light sensor to set dimmer values. Those rules will work locally on the device even if it's not included in a Z-Wave network. This allows to make more robust automation, bringing critical tasks to the actuator itself, mitigating possible radio issues in your automation. At the bottom of the page, you can always check the generated code. But most important is that you can press the USB icon to upload it in your Zeduna Shield. While it's compiling, I will also show you other buttons. Save button allows to download the source code to your computer. Later, you can use Arduino ID, VS Code, or our online editor to upload it to your device. Copy button saves the code in the clipboard. Edit button brings us to a minimalistic online editor. And the share button is made to send your project to a colleague or a community user. No worries, they will not be able to edit your project. They will get a full copy of your configuration and their changes will be stored in a separate project. At the top, we have a reset icon to clear everything and start a new project. Getting back to our examples. The next is a very simple two-relay switch. We will use the two open collector outputs to drive two contactors. Now uploading the configuration. Done. Now we will include the device in the network. Once included, we will see three switches. Two that we defined and one more for Z-Wave backward compatibility mapped to the first one. For this example, we will use a simple double relay instead of a DIN rail contactor. It switches 230 volts and two night lights connected to two sockets on both sides. The double relay requires 5 volts power to operate. Zeduna Shield will provide them. We connect the ground cable and provide 12 volt power to the Zeduna Shield. Finally, we will connect two control cables to PWM1 and PWM2. After powering on, we see our night light switching on and off both lights using Z-Wave control. Next example is a motion sensor. We will use an outdoor IP65 motion sensor providing a 12 volt binary input. Second input is used as a tamper. We upload the generated sketch and include our device in the network. After the inclusion, we see the two sensors and one more made for backward compatibility and replicating the first one. Here we will use a 12 volt power supply and a non-expensive model of an outdoor motion sensor from a security system. First, we connect the two input wires for motion and tamper signals. Then, same for the ground bus. Of course, you should use an electrical box to protect Vega connectors. Finally, we connect the 12 volts bus from the power supply to the sensor and to the Z on the shield. Our sensor is ready for operation. Finally, our last example is a temperature sensor with two DS18B20 connected. Thank you.
After uploading the configuration, we will get two sensors plus one duplicating the first one like we had before. Wiring is very simple. We connect the DSB20 data bus to the pin number 11. This input already has a special resistor required for one wire bus used in those sensors. We connect 5 volts power of the two DS18B20. Their grounds are already connected in the bus. We connect them to the ground pin of the Zidinu shield. Then we provide 12 volts power. Note that we could use the 5 volt power supply for this project, since we don't need 12 volts anywhere. As you have certainly noticed, last three examples could be made on one single Zeduna shield. This allows to save your budget and use complex rules between different peripherals. It is also important to notice that you can improve and change the configuration or rules of your Zeduna shield at any time. But Z-Wave related changes, like the list of channels and their types, as well as the list of association groups, will not be adopted until you re-include the device in the network. There is also a special configuration parameter number 11 to allow adopting those new settings on the fly. But your controller should be able to re-interview the Z-Wave device. Zeduna Shield is a highly configurable device. To make it easier to support the installation in the future, we strongly suggest to save the sketch or at least a link to it in the project documentation of your smart home installation. Zidon Shield is a certified Z-Wave device and is compatible with all Z-Wave controllers. Among them are Fibaro or NICE, Home Assistant and of course all Z-Wave Me controllers based on Z-Wave software such as Raspberry 7 Pro, ZStation and of course the multi-protocol controller. Some older controllers might have issues with complex multi-channel devices. We suggest to use modern gateways bearing a Z-Wave Plus mark. Zeduna Shield supports Z-Wave Long Range, giving a 1 mile radio range. Combined with the IP65 sealed enclosure, it allows automating the yard of your house. Modern Z-Wave Security S2 protects your house from hackers, while Z-Wave Smart Start helps to make the device commissioning seamless and easy. Zeduna Shield is available in many internet shops as well as on Amazon. Just search the Zeduna Shield in the search bar. For bulk orders, go to our official shop at www.smartsd.ch. Thanks for watching.